All right, it is eight in the morning. And uh, I still have a sore throat. I don't. Did I mention yesterday that I had a sore throat? My wife has a sore throat. I don't know what's going on out here. Maybe there's some kind of, uh, I don't know, pollen or something that we're both breathing that we're both allergic to. So here we go. Uh, let the games begin. Uh, Nikki, is that Abel's? I think it's Abel's. Yeah. So that's Glenn's over there. All right. Let's get these undressed and uh, get the pins cut off. Somebody asked me why the pins stick out. And I'll tell you two, two reasons. One, I have to chamfer, chamfer the edges of these pins because I make these the holes at the pin. Hold on, I'm going to sneeze. One second. Oh, Lord. I make these holes so tight so there's no epoxy halo around them that I take this chamfering bit and on the inside of the handles I chamfer the hole in the wood and the pin I put on my belt grinder and I chamfer the very the corners uh, of the pins So I can get them to go through the wood. I mean, it does take, sometimes I got to take my little hammer up there and tap them together. And the reason is I want them to, to be a very tight fit around the pin. Uh, so there is some waste and I cut them wider. Look, I'll show you. I cut them since it's a, you know, unpleasant, boring job. Uh, I cut all my pins at once. And uh, so I cut them to fit my widest handle. Some of the wood, some of my handles are wider than others. So I cut the pins to fit my widest handle. And if I make a, a thinner handle, that there's more sticking out. Which, you know, we're talking about uh, a brass, a three-foot brass rod is not very expensive at all. So we're talking uh, maybe 20, 30, 40 cents for the three pins in here. So... I'm not, you know, there's, I'd rather make it convenient for me than uh, worry about saving a, a pin or two at the end of a three foot rod. So that's why there's, they're sticking out. Same with the stainless, uh, where's the stainless? This has got stainless. The uh, stainless is just as cheap as the brass. And it's just, when I get to this point, I unwrap everything, get them cleaned up, I put it on my bandsaw and I knock the nubs off uh, all the way down, all three pins. And then I clean them all up on my belt sander, belt grinder. And then I put them on my router and knock the corners off so they're ready for sanding. Okay, let me start getting them undressed.
but once they touch each other, it's pretty much it. What I do is I leave the tape off the top because when I sand this, it always I always sand down into the shiny part some, so I have to go back and blend this shiny part in with a with a new part that I'm working on. Sorry for the bumpy ride. Okay. Go ahead, you can go out. It's a beautiful day out.
Yeah, I know it's a rough ride. So sorry.
center from here on out. First thing I do is take some 180 and uh, take the smaller edge of my sanding backer and I sand all the grind lines out of these stainless pins. Now these stainless pins are a lot harder than brass so uh, I have to be really careful not to uh, sand divots in the wood around the stainless. I mean, I, I finally have gotten to the point where I can do that, but uh, I'm going to pause this and those other two knives, and I'm going to do to them what I did to this. I'm going to get all three of them up to this point. So I can sit here for the next three or four hours and sand on handles. So periodically, uh, I'm going to stop and I'm going to get the other two up to this point but periodically I'll show you this as I get it to the buffing stage. And in conjunction, conjunction with shaping and sanding the handle, I also have to uh, uh, polish up the inside of this <clears throat> and then blend this into this to make it all shiny and even. And right up here, Right up here, front of the nose of the handles is where it's usually the hardest to blend. So I got to spend the most work right there. As a matter of fact, I got to pull this out just a little bit and angle it down, and uh, it just makes it easier to get to. And I take my 180, and I first I sand like this. I'll show you, and I can tell whether I'm I've got it flat or not from here to here. I don't know how well you can see, but I will give you a close-up here in a second. Oh, this is going to work out great, so. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's gonna work just fine. When the moon hits your eye like a big pizza pie, that's a more. When I was a young man, I used to pick my little babies up and dance them all around the house singing that song. And uh, my oldest, my daughter, Tiffany, <laughs> she used to request that song when I would come home from work. Sing Moon Hit Your Eye, Daddy. Sing Moon Hit Your Eye. <laughs> I loved being a daddy, but I hated being a husband to the most evil human on the entire planet. All right, one close up and then we uh, get coffee. <laughs> Did I mention coffee? Hold on, let me get you out of this. Okay, let's have a, a look, see here. You see how my sand lines go in this direction? Well, from 180, now I, I sand the whole handle like this, underside, both sides, everything. Even the back here, I gotta sand like that. And uh, I do that with 180, go in this direction, and then I go 220, 320, 400, 500, 600, 800, and then buff. And it's a, a lot of work between here and there, so I have to do this I have to get all this blended and shiny, and then I gotta get the pins, the, 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 the initial grinding marks out of these pins have by hand, and then I also have to do the pins, which whatever grit I sand the wood with, I, I do the pins first, and then I sand the wood. So, I think my sore throat may be coming from breathing this stuff, dummy. I have masks. So uh, I am going to get a cup of coffee and drink it and, uh, and then get them to that one and that one up to this point and then just sit here and sand all day. And I have uh, Salty's Manly Man Buffalo Killing uh, with a Manly Man Walnut and Pins of America, brass pins. And then I got Jay wants a file knife. And uh, that's Chechen Burl right there. That's going to be, you know what? Let me put a little bit of a, I'm going to show you how pretty this wood is. I'm going to wipe it off on my pants. That is going to be some freaking gorgeous wood right there. Okay. And uh, what do we, I think... I'll have to consult my email, but I think he wanted stainless pens. Yeah, I better, I'm going to look right now before I get my coffee because I'll forget. Okay, he wanted stainless. And uh, isn't it amazing how I, uh, somebody contacted me. Well, I better not say a whole lot, but I have another order for a file knife. And uh, I'm not going to say much more. I'm going to refer to it as mystery buyer because uh, it's a gift and I do that. And the last dinner skinner that was mystery buyer, when the gift is given, I'll tell you who it was for. And uh, so I gotta get a box started for mystery buyer. And uh, I'm not gonna say any more than that. It's gonna be a special knife. Okay, now I'm gonna have coffee. Actually, I'm not gonna have coffee. I'm gonna go ahead and get these two knives up to sanding point but uh i do believe that that wood that iron wood is what's giving me my sore throat so let me turn my filter on and i'll get to sand it all right we are sanded up to 600. let's go put it on the buffer and see how pretty we can make it. 
All right, there's uh, George's, Georgia Weatherman. That's his knife. Now, this moves into the leather room. Leather shop, weirdos. Boy, oh boy, I am liking these file knives. And I'm liking that spalted hackberry. Okay, now I'm going to uh, get started on this one. I should have these three uh, done and ready for their sheaths today. I should have. I have one more file knife I got to start working. Actually, I, I'm still, I don't know. I haven't got a confirmation yet. Uh, I did raise my price to 225 since the person initially inquired about one. So, uh, Maybe they're having second thoughts. I don't know. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and start the box. And if the person does not want it, I'll just keep making it. And maybe by the time I finish it, somebody will want it. Uh, okay, I've got these all cleaned up and ready for the hand sanding. cup of coffee and then I'll get to sanding. Alright, there's Abel's. Boy, do I like that desert ironwood. I have not put wax on these. I have uh, some museum wax. And that's the very last thing I do after I'm done handling them, even done sharpening them. Uh, I buff them one last time. And then I have some museum wax. And I, I can't do too much wax on here because it'll get into grooves and it'll be hard to get out. But I do take a, I wax the handle, I wax the, the beveled edge and then whatever's left I can lightly go across these areas with it and uh, I have uh, what do you call them uh, microfiber uh, buffing towels that pull the whatever wax does get in there it does pull it out okay I'm really happy with that one more this is what it this is what that looked like just oh an hour ago and now i will get this one to look like that
it moving up to 320 now. <clears throat> And I got about three more grades of sandpaper to go and about another hour of sanding and then uh, probably uh, 20 minutes on the buffer. So if you've made it this far in the video, this is the video. I know it was a long video and uh, most of the people who don't really watch my videos probably haven't watched to the end okay my wife just said she read something saying that 70 percent of americans were mm, inoculated which i think is complete bs uh anyway this is it if uh if you've lasted this long in a video leave a comment this is the video. This, these are knives for sale. These are knives I'm giving away right here. And uh, you know what? Uh, let me stop this. I will show you these. I'm going to be drawing from this video Saturday morning. I will upload this Thursday morning. And Saturday morning, uh, I will draw from this video and give these four knives away. But let me get them out, and I'll show them to you. Let me put these away. Uh, these are what they all look like, all polished up. This is uh, Abel, this is Nikki, this is uh, Glenn, that's the uh, stabilized Hackberry, and I've got uh, one, well I haven't cut it out yet, but I've started on it, for Jay, uh, Mystery Shopper, and Salty Shellbacks, Rugged BC Special, Manly Man BC Special. But I'm going to not work on them till I make the sheaths for this. Tonight, what I'm doing at home is I put my, uh, oh, my wax. Where is it? I wax them up and then buff them. And then they're ready for their sheaths. Okay, so let me uh, put these away. I'll get these out and show them to you. All right, this is one of the knives. This is a neck knife. with sheath and when you get this careful when you get this you adjust it to the length you want and then you tie it right here this is uh, white oak curly with a little bit it's got a little bit of curl in it BC special and I don't really like making the BC specials uh, out of the files or making, yeah, BC specials from the files because uh, it's a much smaller knife and it's a little bit wasteful of these very hard to get files. So that's uh, knife number two. Here is knife three, Swamp Rat. Desert Ironwood. A 
or the sheath. And here's another BC special, a regular steel, but I, uh, I did a uh, tumble and uh, uh, acid etched stone tumbled bird's eye maple with black G10 liners. And that is a black sheath. So, many thanks, many thanks for being a subscriber, and uh, I'll up, you'll, you'll see this Thursday morning, even though this is Tuesday evening, you'll see this Thursday morning and Saturday morning, I will draw from this video, from the names in the comment section, so thanks very much for being a subscriber, and uh, some of y'all have become very good friends. And let me just say this, I, in the last, I seem to have made some very unhappy people. And, uh, you know, when I'm sanding and thinking, and then I turn the camera on and talk, I, I am not one of those that think my opinion is more valuable than anyone else's opinion. I just have the opportunity to share it, and most people don't. So... You know, I'm not uh, saying that I'm right and you're wrong or I'm better than other people because of uh, one reason or another. I'm just sharing my opinions because I'm sitting there, sanding, doing nothing, and I have a lot of time to think. And I turn the camera on and I share my opinion, and it doesn't have to mean anything to anybody. It's just me and my opinion. I am one guy, and we all know op what opinions are like. Everybody has one. And uh, I do think I am somewhat opinionated, but I buffer that with a realization that my opinion is no more important than somebody else's opinion. So there we go. I ended it on a conciliatory tone. So everybody who's mad at me, stop being mad. Uh, I'm not important enough to be mad at. <laughs>